So you can go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Cameron. Um, grew up in Hollywood. Um, played sports all my life. Um, I've never been self-conscious about my body until mm -hmm. about maybe two years ago. I had moments where I noticed it, where it got it didn't make me depressed or sad, but it didn't make me say, hey, I didn't make me change this for whatever reason. Kind of sucked. Because mm -hmm. um, I always been an athlete, I guess you would say, but mm -hmm. I guess past few years I had the athletic body mm -hmm. that everybody wants. And that kind of was like, it sucked for a while. But now I'm like, well, hey, I'm getting older, so that's what happened. So yeah. it's not like, I'm not going to beat myself over it. So your now. body's changed as you've gotten older. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. and I guess I have to like say, hey, I'm not 16 anymore. I can eat cheeseburgers all I want to anymore. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with my body, but also my am also the type of person that will, I always continue to work out. Yeah. I always say, hey, maybe I can lose a few more pounds. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say, hey, I have to lose these pounds and be like, hey, I want to. So. Yeah. So how old were you the first time you like were aware that like there was a social standard for bodies? Um, weight wise, it was second grade. As uh, far as actual physical look, it was of course high school like everybody else. Um, so but the weight thing was my first time playing football. I had a, literally a weight limit for a second grader. Which was, no, we don't say anything about if I eat cheeseburger, I'm not gonna die. But in a second grader, you think you are. If I eat cheeseburger, eat McDonald's, mm -hmm. I'm gonna gain 300 pounds <laughs> in one night. So, first time was, like I said, in Little League football, our weight class was 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. That was the average size of a boy in the US, I guess. And that, at that age group. Right. And of course, I was at like 68 or 69 because I'm taller than everybody else, so of course, I have more weight. I remember the coach telling me, saying, Hey, if you gain any more weight, you can't play football. Those were his exact words. So, to a first grade boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, if you gain any more weight, you can't play football. So, I'm like, I'm devastated. Like, hey, this is my favorite sport. I'm finally getting to play. In my mind, he was saying, By gaining weight, my football career is done for the rest of my life. That's what I heard. That's scary. Um, yeah. I remember, like, I was confused about it, but also I didn't want to ask too many questions because mm -hmm. I felt like I'd be a burden to my parents and the coach. So I told my mom, I'm not going to eat tonight. I'm not eating until next football season or I'm not going to eat until next weigh-ins because I'm going to be overweight. I was terrified. Oh, my God. What did your mom say? Uh, I remember when I told her, we were, in, I was in, we were still driving from practice, and she's... At a stoplight, looked at me and was like, what? I never turned down food, ever. Yeah. And I still don't, but <laughs> back then, I never turned down any kind of food. So for for me to say, hey, I might eat dinner because I'm going to gain weight, I saw a look on her face where she kind of worried, but she was also, if I was joking around, so she kind of brushed it off. I was like, hey, you got to eat tonight. No, I got the usual black parent threat. Eat tonight, you don't eat at all. <laughs> so so I ate, I ate it. And I remember the next morning being freaked out because I had weigh-ins next day. I mean, like, oh my God, so I eat breakfast or I eat lunch at school. I remember just thinking, I'll be, my football career's over. Oh my God. <laughs> in first grade. And thankfully, I was, I was the same way as the day before. So they kind of got the real turn and said, hey, I can still eat and yeah. not you know, blow up pretty much. But maybe five weeks later, I did gain the weight. Mm -hmm. And Coach Tillman said, hey, you can't play with your classmates anymore. Mm. You gotta pay with the older kids who I don't know. No, of course they'll be mean to me coming younger. Mm -hmm. But I did so good with the older kids and the coach was like, hey, no, don't have to lose weight anymore. Just mm -hmm. pay with them. So then my whole mindset changed to where the bigger I am, the better I am at football. Mm -hmm. And that lasted till I'll be little league through middle school. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem. I can gain weight in middle school. I can gain weight in little league, and I was still pretty good. Yeah. Then high school happened, mm -hmm. where I, I hit my growth spurts. I was gaining weight, but I wasn't thick like I normally been my whole life. 
Yeah. So I was skinny. You were I, you were tall and thin. Yeah, I was tall and yeah, thin. Yeah, I, I remember tall that. And thin. I wasn't gaining any muscle. Mm -hmm. And from there, it went from being the star player to riding the bench. Mm -hmm. So I still had a mindset of I'm good at football, but I'm not good enough because of my size. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do with my skills, how fast I was, something like that. I always told myself I'm not good enough because I'm not big enough. Yeah. And another thing that happened was I went to a football camp for UAB. Mm -hmm. It was my freshman year. Coaches, they said I was be 6'5", 250 by the time I was a senior. When the senior year came, I was 6'3", 170 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so I had recruiting offers from smaller schools. And then Alabama happened. Mm -hmm. Coach freaking Mike Shula, who <laughs> I, to this day I hate him. Because the exact words were, you're good enough to play for Alabama, but you're not big enough to play for Alabama. You serious? That's where the exact words. He said, I'm not big enough to play defense in the SEC. My body wouldn't hold up to it. That's all he said. Mm. He said that to me and turned to, I don't even say little player on my team, but he turned to him and said, hey, you're the perfect size for our defense. Wow. And I was like, this is my best friend sitting next to me. I was sitting to him for a good, probably for a school year. Mm -hmm. Like in the hallway, we didn't make eye contact. He would text me, I didn't answer. Because those yeah. words, he's saying, hey, you're big enough to play, but Cameron, you're not. So it made you feel bad, and you kind of, like, took it on your friend. Yeah, pretty much. Because you're just like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, fuck, like, <laughs> I've been playing the same game for 18 years. Now you're saying, because I'm too skinny, I can't play for the team I looked up to my entire life. So how did that make you feel? I got really salty about sports. Uh, I didn't be friends who were bigger than me. Um, mm hmm just, it sucked, like, mm -hmm. I didn't Did it make you it. depressed? Um, yeah, it did, and of course I didn't show it. No, anyway, I was quiet anyway, as a person anyway, so I didn't really express my depression, if that's even possible. Yeah, you didn't tell anybody, yeah. really. Yeah, and so people just thought I was being quiet and normal self. So, um, like I said, I didn't eat, I didn't work out, I figured what's the point now, you know? Yeah. The coach that I wouldn't say yes to me said it's too late. Yeah. So, um, I guess one of the good things that come out of it that I did focus on school, my grades went up. Mm -hmm. I was like, we're not getting a football scholarship, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I would bring the grades up. Mm -hmm. um, ended up not even going to college just because I was like, I can't go to a college where I know if I go watch a football game, I'm going to hate every single player on that field. <laughs> So I was like, well, I'll join the military, which, which wasn't a bad idea for me. I was in RTC, dad was in the military. Yeah. Because the military, they celebrate you are the UK, you're tall, skinny, and you can run. We want you. Yeah. So it was like, for the first time, athletic wise, they were like, hey, we want your body type. Mm -hmm. So come to us and you do whatever you want to. So I did good in basic training, first running, push ups, all that. You no, know, because like I said, I was tall and skinny. Yeah. So, so was everybody else around me. There weren't no huge muscular guys. They were all either tall and skinny or short and skinny. That's all we were. Mm -hmm. So, I think about two years into the military, where I moved down to Florida from my base. Mm -hmm. I live on the beach. Usually, once again, I'm seeing all these big muscular guys. I'm seeing the tissue they're getting. I'm seeing that girls pay this to me, but it's because of they think I have money or my eye color. It's literally <laughs> the only two things. <laughs> they think you have money or your eye color? <laughs> yeah, it's one of the only things that got me attention from the girls on the beach. Um, and that, that's how the whole team rolling as far as I need to get to the gym again. I need to have a strict diet. I need to eat, I don't know how much protein per day. To the point where I had no social life at all. Either I go to work, go to the gym, or go home. And it's worked out with me because you know, I did start getting the muscular body being, you know, tall, pretty eyes with nice body, which was like mm -hmm. awesome though. Especially with me living near the beach so much, mm -hmm. it was awesome. Like I got the attention I wanted. Mm -hmm. From the ladies? Yeah, from mm -hmm. ladies. But then mm -hmm. I still hear the negative things. Oh, he's on steroids or he's just a dumb muscle head. Yeah. I was like, what the hell, dude? Like, so... That got to me also because I was getting the attention I wanted, mm -hmm. but still getting negative feedback from people. 
from, I don't know, like I'm saying, I had to buy that. Everybody said I need to have, but still getting their feedback, they got to me also. Yeah. So, they got me, they got me, um, far as being not big enough, they got to me also to a point where I was like, hey man, I need to take steroids to get bigger mm -hmm. to impress to other people who are saying that if you're going to call me a muscle head, I might as well be one. Yeah. So, if I'm not going to please you, then I might as well just keep pleasing other people more. Is it what, rather it's bigger muscles, more tattoos, mm -hmm. uh, spend my money on stupid stuff. Like, I bought, after my first deployment, I bought a brand new truck, which mm -hmm. I didn't need to do. Yeah. I put rims on it, lift kit, all that. And you're just trying to, like, show out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> my whole life, when I lived in Florida, my whole life was me trying to show out. Yeah. Rather it was my body, stuff I could buy, partying, whatever. Mm hmm And... I'm not saying I wasn't happy if I was in Florida. Yeah. But I would have these moments where I was like, what the hell am I doing? Like, yeah. you know, all this stuff, I'm killing myself pretty much yeah. to tease everybody else. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm broke. Yeah, I have a nice body, but I'm freaking broke. Yeah. So I do get a girlfriend, I can't take her out. Yeah. And so <laughs> it was like everything I was doing was never a positive thing for me. I was just working out, I was working out. If I had free time, I was at the gym. If my body said, hey, stop working out, I'm hurting, I didn't care. I worked out with messed up joints. That's what my knees are shot right now mm -hmm. from just working out. My like, I was just like, if it hurts me, my mind my, my habit was if I'm hurting in the gym, that means I'm getting better, mm -hmm. which was, it's, it's true at some point and, and to a certain point, but at the point where I was at, I was destroying my body far as the stuff I was eating, the supplements I was taking together, and I was saying, I never took steroids. I did take other stuff that was probably not the best of choices, as far as just to get that one extra inch on my arms mm -hmm. or get those five extra pounds that I wanted. Yeah. So. So, other than like wanting like female attention, what do you think was pushing you to do these things? Was it like the media? Just um, like all you saw was Oh yeah, like... it was definitely that. It was media, um, like saying, um, seeing, watching sports and seeing guys who had the body, who made it to, you know, big colleges like Alabama or NFL. You no, know, I was like, hey, I can get that body, but I might not, might not make the NFL. Mm -hmm. I can one day still get that body that they have. Mm -hmm. And that drove me so much to the point where once I got it, it wasn't enough for me still to where I'll go watch bodybuilding competitions but like, okay, they're huge. Why can't I? Yeah. And it was, it was a deception. A deception of, yeah. of, 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 Perception? Yeah. Yeah. Of that if you're a guy and you're an athlete, you have to be big. Like Which you, is such bullshit. Yeah. Like I say it. it that mentality stuck with me until about maybe two years ago where I was like, I have to be big, I have to, I might not have a perfect ass, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to have fucking nice arms, going to have nice back, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where the power time that we first started posting about this, I thought about it like, hey, mm -hmm. this is, yeah, it's good to be in shape, it's good to be healthy, but... Mm -hmm to demand your body to do something that it's not going to naturally do. That's not healthy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the opposite of yeah. healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought about it then. Probably when time I came across my trainers when I was happy with my body. Like I was like, I saw how other people were living. I was helping them reach their goals. We were healthy, realistic goals. I could tell them my story and if I had a guy who came in and wanted to gain weight or lose weight, I could tell him, hey, I've been through everything you wanted to do. So I can help you do it the healthy way and avoid the mistakes I did. Mm -hmm. So I guess me focusing on other people so much, I let my body go, I guess, or go back to it. I let it relax for the first time in years. Yeah. This when I did gain you know, the stomach or gain mm -hmm. a little bit of weight. Which is okay. Yeah. But I also got the comments that, hey, you're a personal trainer. You're not supposed to look like that. Oh, so a personal trainer can't have a belly? Yeah, pretty much. Really? 
according to people in gas. Uh, that's and, not cool. Yeah. So when I started getting those comments again, I was like, here it comes again. I don't I don't fit the mold of I'm no longer an athlete, now a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Who after I fit that mold now and it came with a exception once again to lose weight. I would eat maybe once a day. Which as a person yeah. trainer I know it's I would never tell my client to do that. But I'm doing it. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. So I'm I'm run I'm eating once a day, I'm working out four four hours a day. Yeah. Just to lose You're starving yourself. Yeah, I literally was. I go So yeah. I'll keep telling myself that I'm I'm fasting or a cleanse or whatever mm. but I knew I, what I was doing was not healthy at all disordered eating that's yeah. an eating disorder and it got to a point where I wouldn't force myself to well I said I, I, I got pretty close to force myself to actually like eat a lot and throw it up you would I never got to that point but I was I knew for a fact I was close so you were like you were definitely like like restricting, yes. like you were kind of starving yourself. But yeah. But you time. never made it to like the bulimic side, but you right. almost did. Right. I know. I I knew I was because at one point in time, it had to be the holidays. I came back home. I was eating for probably Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and around my family, I didn't really think anything of it. So I just stuffed my face. The next day at the gym, I could tell that I still had the food in my stomach. I, I had been food baby pretty much. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, this has to leave before my client comes in. Mm. And I was so tempted to go in the bathroom and throw wherever left was up. Yeah. Just so my client would see my extra stomach. Mm. And that's the, that, I think that's when everything said in where, hey, I'm 26 years old now. Mm -hmm. and I've had dollars all my life as far as what bias I have. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I've been too skinny. I've been too muscular. I've been too fat. Yeah. So why stress myself to the point where I'll do something stupid later to please somebody? Yeah. And part of the past two years, I've been just, I've been me. I've been, if I want McDonald's, I eat McDonald's. Mm -hmm. If I want the salad, I eat a salad. Yeah. If I want to work up four hours, because I want to, or I'm bored or something. I'll work for 30 minutes, I'll work up for 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm not going to say, hey, um, you're right about me. Let me go do something drastic just because... You want to and i started to realize also people who did put their doubts on me it was mainly because there's somebody told them the same thing yeah and it was not saying and like with your with with with, 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 with what you're doing i realize by the same isn't just for people who are too skinny or people who are too big it goes from everybody could be by the shame where they're yeah. You can be you can be voted the best look person in the world. Mm -hmm. Somebody in this world can say, Hey, you're ugly. Yeah. Or you're too big or you're too skinny. So It's true. So I love what you're doing because from all the people that I've seen you doing so far, nobody's the same. Mm -hmm. At all. Yeah. And they got me to they got me to think it's like, hey, if these few people that you know, which is very slick few people in the world, if they can be comfortable with their bodies, there's no reason I can't. A person who's, let's say, who's been through every body type in my short lifetime. Yeah. So why keep stressing when my goal is I'm going to live to about hopefully 80. <laughs> so I can't go another 50 years of stressing of my body or I'm not going to make it. Yeah. So you'll make it there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying, I don't get it. So my doctor says I'm healthy. I'm okay. Exactly. How do you feel about like, you know, I feel like a lot of people assume that body positivity is for women. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah. And it's not. I feel like people think that Beautiful Bodies is primarily for women because we've had a lot more women volunteer right. because of the stigma that's around, oh, well, dudes are just supposed to be confident no matter what. Well, men struggle right. a lot. and. The difference is, is that we are allowed to talk about it more, but dudes really aren't. How do you feel about that? My thing was, I was never, my confidence was never there. Like, I always had high self-esteem. I always had, I put out confidence. Mm hmm So, it's also because, yeah, I'm a guy. I have to 
have to say, hey, I'm okay with this. I was, I was never faking it always. When I was skinny, I thought I had a nice body sometimes. When I was huge, I knew I had a nice body. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. So, I, I always had the confidence in myself as far as not that people get to me. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I've always had, I, I, can't, I can't go to my female, male friends and say, hey, I'm looking fat today. Yeah. I can't say that. Yeah. You know, I can't go to my female friends and say, hey, uh, same thing, I'm, I'm feeling fat today because I might, I'm afraid I might trigger something with them. Yeah. So, well, yeah, it's just still that stigma with male and female. Yeah. I think it would be there for, you know, forever pretty much. Really? I think so, but... I, I think we're working to change that. I think projects like like uh, like beautiful bodies and projects like ours, and that's why feminism is so important because yeah. feminism lets men be human beings. Right. It allows us to take the fact that, like you know, we kind of like society sometimes like wants to treat men like animals. Like right. y'all can't like respect other people that y'all are just bred to react. Like you can only like have like instincts and right. primal like reactions to things or you know but that's not true men are very intricate you know beings just like women are um y'all are very sensitive and i think things affect you guys more than society will allow you to well do you feel like um you know like uh as someone who kind of has changed their way of thinking like i feel like a lot of people might be attracted to you know like bigger people or like different types of body types that aren't like seen in the media right. and so because that's not represented they might feel bad about that like right. you know like um i think everyone has their own like ideals or like their own preferences when it comes to like the laws of attraction or whatever um i've met a lot of men that like bigger girls that like curvy women but they're embarrassed about it right. or they feel weird about it and it's like some weird complex that they have like going on like um, as a dude, like, do you feel like, um, like there's a lot of pressure to have a certain preference and like be a, like, you know, I used to be that way. Like if I live in Florida, you no, know, if a bigger girl approached me, mm-hmm. I would be nice to her, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't be like, I'll, I'll probably find her attractive. Mm-hmm. I would let anybody else know. Yeah. Just because, no, not only with me being God, but also live in the beach culture. Mm-hmm. You want the tall, long-legged, mm-hmm. small waist girl, of course. Mm-hmm. And literally every girl I dated like that mm-hmm. didn't work out because I was with them just because how they looked. Wow. So, yeah, it worked for a few months because, you no, know, we're two good-looking people who mm-hmm. part together. So, yeah, it's going to work out. But once it got down to being more of a serious relationship, and I got to know them, they got to know me. When you got, when it got to get real. <laughs> yeah, it was probably just a really bad relationship. Yeah, because it wasn't based on anything but shallowness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, so I, I've been that guy. I've been like, uh, I see a bigger chick who I'm attracted to. My friend, my friends might say, or yeah. my friend, my family might say, or yeah. all that. So thankfully, I'm right now we're. I think you're hot. I think you're hot. I don't care what exactly. anybody says. So. That's how it should be. Yeah. Um. Do you think projects like ours are going to help break that stigma? I think it will. Like I said, um. With everybody that's been a project so far being so different. Mm-hmm. But lately, all the women that you've had, I I think they're beautiful. Like they're mm-hmm. they're beautiful. Yeah. In a sense, as from the stories I read mentally. Also, as a guy, I think I think they're hot. So, yeah. <laughs> and they all been different. So yeah, there's. I feel like if you meet somebody and you're attracted to them, I've been talking to them, mm-hmm. then that's all gonna last so long. Exactly. But if you're, I'm not saying that I'll step in. I might sound like an asshole when I say this, but. <laughs> I was saying, if, if any woman approaches me, I'm going to immediately be like, hey, I want to get to know you, see if we are up to date. Mm-hmm. If I'm not, I'm a firm believer, you're not trying to somebody physically first, mm-hmm. then get to know them mm-hmm. um, mentally and relationship wise, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're not going to want to be around them, all that. Mm-hmm. But if you meet somebody who you are, 
I guess semi attracted to, mm -hmm. then once you get done mentally, then the physical track would be even more. So it's like a perfect storm. Yeah. There has to be like. It has to be a medium. It has to be everything there, like right. the physical and the mental and emotional. You have to catch my eye for me and want to get to know you. But yeah, I mean now where you you have to be perfect for me to get to know you because every relationship I've been in this for a long term, mm -hmm. they weren't perfect physical wise. Because there is no perfect. Right. It's once all got, bullshit. Once I got to know them. They became even better looking as I got to know them. Yeah, because so. you were getting to know them. Right. And that way you could really dive into everything else. Yeah. So, like, do you agree with the statement that there's no right or wrong way? Like, there's no right or wrong way to have a body. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. All bodies are good bodies. Right. You know, and I think that having a dude talk about this is going to definitely help break a lot of stigma and it's going right. to change. I think some dudes are going to read your story, watch your video, and be like, damn. Right. Like, I can relate with that, and maybe I should stop being so hard on myself and, like, right. just do me. Exactly. Just be, don't, like, be happy. If you want to put yourself through something, then try to do it. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, you don't succeed at goal, whereas mentally or physical, you just didn't make it. Yeah. Just make sure these goals are for self-care. Oh, yeah. Definitely that. Don't make... If you want, if you're a guy you want to compete, then make sure you can compete in a natural way. Where if you are a huge guy, mm -hmm. make sure you're a huge guy naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a woman, you want to compete in a bikini. Make sure that mm -hmm. you just naturally have a small frame. Don't don't force yourself to have that small frame. Yeah. If you're small, you're small. Then yeah, bikini is perfect for you because you're mm -hmm. a small woman. Yeah. If you're a bigger woman who's more athletic with muscle, mm -hmm. then don't be, don't think that it's because you're have thick thighs that you're unattractive. Yeah. So yeah, just be happy. Just set your goals. If you make them, make them. If you don't, set more.